NASA's push to return humans to the moon has faced challenge after challenge, and one of the most critical is tied directly to SpaceX's Starship. The lander that will carry astronauts to the lunar surface isn't just another contract. It's the backbone of the Artemis mission plan. But when setbacks start stacking up, the pressure shifts from optimism to urgency, especially when the agency itself steps forward with a public warning. That kind of announcement signals not just technical hurdles, but a deeper concern about timelines that the entire world is watching. The warning didn't fall into empty air. It struck directly at SpaceX, whose starship is already under the spotlight as the largest, most ambitious rocket ever built. Delays with such a vehicle ripple far beyond one company. They push the entire lunar program into uncertainty. And when NASA takes the step of cautioning about a schedule slip, it sets the stage for a response from Elon Musk himself, whose declarations often carry as much weight in the space industry as official agency briefings. If you want to stay updated on every twist, delay, and bold claim in the Artemis program and Starship's journey to the moon, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next chapter. When NASA awarded SpaceX the human landing system contract in April 2021, it set in motion one of the most ambitious projects in modern space exploration, turning Starship into a crude lunar lander. At the time, confidence was high, but as years passed, the program began facing skepticism from within the very agency backing it. While SpaceX advanced Starship's design with rapid-fire testing at Starbase, NASA's advisory bodies started openly questioning whether the timelines being promised could realistically hold, given the scale of the technical challenges still ahead. The tension became visible in September, when NASA's Aerospace Safety Advisory Panel publicly raised concerns about Artemis III's viability. Senior figures with deep human spaceflight experience, including former flight directors and astronauts, warned that Starship's progress toward becoming a fully functional lander remained behind expectations. Their assessments weren't casual. They reflected the agency's growing unease about relying so heavily on a vehicle that had yet to complete a full orbital test mission, let alone demonstrate critical milestones like in-orbit refueling. Compounding the doubts was the timeline comparison. Critics pointed out that despite nearly four years since the HLS award, SpaceX had yet to deliver a flight-ready lunar vehicle. On paper, that sounds slow. But history complicates that narrative. NASA's own space launch system consumed over a decade and more than $30 billion before its debut flight. SpaceX, by contrast, has operated under a fraction of that budget and time, yet is expected to achieve a vastly more complex system. This uneven standard fueled debate over whether NASA was fairly judging SpaceX's progress or holding it to an unrealistic pace simply because Artemis deadlines are politically charged. Meanwhile, attention turned to the technology at the core of Starship's lunar mission, cryogenic propellant transfer. Artemis III depends on it, yet SpaceX has not publicly demonstrated the capability. NASA officials highlighted that this single challenge could derail the entire timeline, since a lunar mission requires not one or two, but dozens of successful tanker flights to fill the lander. The scale of the operation left experts split. Some saw it as an unprecedented engineering hurdle with slim odds of perfect execution, while others argued that SpaceX's track record of breaking impossible barriers made them the only team capable of pulling it off. This was the exact point where the debate shifted from cautious analysis to direct confrontation. NASA's warning about Artemis III delays placed the spotlight firmly on SpaceX, and it didn't take long for Elon Musk to respond. Rather than addressing NASA directly, Musk used his usual channels, posts online and comments to media outlets to dismiss the criticism as exaggerated and short-sighted. In his view, SpaceX's pace of development had already outstripped anything previously achieved in spaceflight, and expecting every milestone to unfold on NASA's timeline was unrealistic. His comments carried the same defiance that has defined his public battles with regulators and industry skeptics in the past. At the same time, Gwynne Shotwell, SpaceX's president and COO, also weighed in. 
Her approach was more measured, but equally firm. She pointed out that Starship was not a typical government project, but a constantly evolving vehicle undergoing iterative design changes at unmatched speed. She noted that the most recent Starship flight had achieved every mission objective, clearing the path for the next generation of upgrades, including the debut of the Starship V3 variant. According to Shotwell, this new version was the first truly capable of demonstrating orbital refueling, the very milestone that NASA's advisory panel had singled out as the biggest risk to Artemis III. Her remarks reframed the conversation. Instead of SpaceX being behind, she argued they were right on track to prove the critical technologies before they were actually needed. Much of NASA's concern rested on the scale of propellant transfer operations. To execute Artemis III, SpaceX must launch multiple tankers into orbit, rendezvous them with the HLS variant of Starship, and successfully move hundreds of tons of cryogenic propellant while maintaining stability and temperature control. Advisory panel members had highlighted how even a single failure could jeopardize the mission, and mathematical risk assessments painted a grim picture of the odds. Musk countered by emphasizing SpaceX's history of succeeding in areas once dismissed as impossible. The same arguments had been made against reusable rockets, yet Falcon 9 had turned routine booster landings into an industry standard. To Musk, orbital refueling was simply the next step in a proven model of rapid engineering progress. Underlying the clash was a broader tension between government program pacing and SpaceX's private sector development model. NASA, operating within political oversight and multi-billion dollar budget allocations, tends to plan conservatively with wide margins for risk. SpaceX, on the other hand, deliberately accepts test failures as part of its design process, moving fast and refining hardware in the field, rather than waiting years for simulations and reviews. When NASA's safety advisors labeled Starship's schedule unrealistic, they were measuring it against traditional aerospace practices. Musk and Shotwell both made it clear that SpaceX had no intention of slowing down to match that pace. The dispute also carried financial and political undertones. NASA's contract with SpaceX for HLS was awarded at roughly $4 billion across two phases, a fraction of the money spent on SLS and Orion. Yet it was SpaceX, not the government-built rocket, that was being accused of threatening Artemis timelines. Musk used this comparison to highlight what he called a double standard. A program like SLS could absorb cost overruns and multi-year delays without the same level of public criticism, while SpaceX was being targeted for setbacks despite delivering progress at a fraction of the cost. His argument resonated with many outside observers who saw the contrast as evidence of institutional bias against private companies disrupting traditional aerospace. As the exchange escalated, Musk's remarks became sharper. In one instance, when asked about suggestions that NASA might rely on Blue Origin's competing lander design if Starship fell too far behind, Musk dismissed the idea outright. His response was short and cutting, underscoring his confidence that SpaceX would remain the only viable option within the Artemis timeframe. He also downplayed media narratives about political tensions affecting Starship's funding, citing his continued strong ties with U.S. leadership as proof that such speculation was unfounded. For Musk, the real challenge wasn't political maneuvering or funding shortfalls. It was executing the hardware tests and scaling production fast enough to satisfy NASA's deadlines. Shotwell echoed this focus on execution in her own statements, emphasizing that SpaceX's engineering teams were fully concentrated on the two key hurdles, mastering orbital propellant transfer and demonstrating full vehicle reusability. She revealed that new infrastructure was already under construction to simulate lunar operations, including a dedicated test stand for the HLS lander. This was meant to signal that while critics saw delays, SpaceX was quietly building the systems that would soon make the mission feasible. Her remarks reassured investors and supporters that despite external doubt, internal progress was steady and deliberate. NASA, for its part, did not retract its warning, but neither did it escalate the criticism further. The agency remains in a delicate position, 
heavily dependent on SpaceX for Artemis III, yet obligated to acknowledge risks to congressional oversight panels and the public. Musk's declaration and Shotwell's backing effectively turned the advisory panel's criticism into another round in the ongoing tug-of-war between old aerospace caution and new private sector ambition. The outcome remains tied to milestones still ahead. Starship's first orbital refueling test, the readiness of the HLS variant, and the ability to sustain a launch cadence capable of meeting lunar mission requirements. In the end, the confrontation underscored one truth that both sides acknowledged in different ways. Artemis III's success depends almost entirely on SpaceX proving Starship's capabilities on time. NASA's warning was meant to prepare stakeholders for the risk of delay. Musk's declaration, reinforced by Shotwell, was a promise that those doubts would be overturned by results. The tension between those two positions will define the next phase of the Artemis program, as every Starship test flight now carries the weight of not just SpaceX's future, but NASA's lunar ambitions as well.